Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about NPRM or what is the FAA's remote ID proposal to introduce legislation into the USA to change the way both model aircraft users and drones are used. And in this video I'm going to give you my interpretation of this document and I'm going to try and break down the basics of this for you and explain what this is all about and what will affect you and what won't. Now I just want to be clear, I have read this at least four times and what I'm telling you in this is my interpretation of this. It is a complex document there may be bits of this I get wrong so please do take that into account secondly as of today this is a proposal and you have the opportunity to feed back on this from up to two months from the 1st of January so I will put a link to that in the description of this video as well and I suggest every model aircraft user gets out there and gives their thoughts on this because there are things in this that have frankly far and wide implications for all model aircraft users so whether you be a drone or not and actually my interpretation of this is drones actually come off lighter in this and model aircraft users are absolutely getting hammered but what I'm going to do is take you through what this is about and the basics and hopefully by the end of this video you'll have a better idea of what it's all about now just before I start I'd just like to say if you like what you see please do subscribe to the channel there's a button in the bottom right hand corner by pressing that you'll get any updates and hopefully if you find this useful you'll do it anyway let's get on with this now as I do this I'm going to be looking back and forth at the screen because again I've set it out in a presentation so I can understand what this is about myself and be able to show it to you guys so the FAA put this proposal out on the 26th of December and it is what they intend to bring into law if there is no kickback on this it will come into law two years after it is passed if it gets through as it is today so there will be a two-year period where nothing will change and then it will become legislation and law and everyone will have to comply with it now unless you've been hiding under a rock you may have come across this and you might have come across this image as well and really this document is about remote ID and about how drones will be conspicuous and how they're going to set up a UTM for everyone to be connected to and this image gives a basic overview of it but it doesn't really tell the full story and I'm going to take you through what I think that is now before I do that the one thing I want to say about is talk about I should say is who is affected by this and the reality is this will affect every single drone or model aircraft user in the USA who is flying. This doesn't just specifically aimed at drones. It isn't just putting drones in one camp and aircraft in another. If you are a glider, model aircraft, plane, chopper anything that will lift off the ground that is remote control you will be affected by these regulations and what that says is an unmanned aircraft means an aircraft operated without possibility of direct human intervention from within or on the aircraft so that means this document applies to anything that there is no human on board basically it's that simple so the basics of this are as follows the FAA are proposing a number of changes that include changes to the US registration scheme now at the moment in the USA I believe you register as a person and you don't have to register each of your aircraft you just register yourself and as long as you've done that you are fine and that is how it is in the UK today they are proposing that they need to change this that you will have to register each aircraft separately and the reason reason for this is you will need to provide them with a serial number of the aircraft so they can trace it back to you now because they are changing this from street registration of a person through to each aircraft it means you are going to have to pay for every aircraft you register and not just pay the once five dollars like you did before the next thing they are proposing is an introduction of a broadcast remote ID on all UAS above 0.55 pounds I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute but what broadcast ID is the aircraft will transmit data out wirelessly from itself the interjection of a network remote ID called USS on UAS above 0.55 pounds now in the EU 
they have also proposed a broadcast remote ID system. However, this network called USS Remote ID is basically UTM. And the US, as far as I know, are the first country to propose and mandate that this is going to be necessary when you fly. So not only are you going to have a remote ID from the aircraft, you're going to actually have to connect to the internet and transmit data when you're flying. And again, I'll explain that a little bit more as well. The uh, requirement will be to use a UTM, so one of these service suppliers, and that cost will be levied on you, the user. So before you will be able to fly an aircraft over 0.55 pounds, you must be a member of one of these USSs. And that means basically a monthly or annual subscription. And that is something new that we haven't had up until now. And finally, there are requirements for UAS to comply with the new remote ID requirements and be certified. Now, this is about hardware. Aircraft will be required to be made to comply with these regulations in both transmitting as well as using the online connection as well. And all manufacturers will be required to comply with this. And again, this is similar to within the EU where you have to actually have all aircraft transmitting, but the internet side of it is new. Now, they are proposing two levels of remote ID system, and I don't really understand why they've gone down this road. I sort of get it, but I also think it overcomplicates things. And they're going to call them standard remote ID and limited remote ID. Now, the standard remote ID is pretty much what most aircraft that you buy off the shelf. So drones, for instance, let's ignore model aircraft a second, but drones will end up complying with because we're not a million miles off that today. And for you to be able to use an aircraft legally, you will have to have one with a standard remote ID, which will allow normal flight without any restrictions of area. So you can fly normally where you fly today with a compliant system. There's a reason I'm mentioning that, and I'll come on to that again in the limited remote ID section. It will be required to re broadcast a remote ID at all times. So that is wirelessly transmit from the aircraft. That is similar to what DJI do on their aircraft now, such as Aeroscope. It is basically the same as what we will be required to have in the EU. So your aircraft will transmit your control signal back and forth between it and your remote controller, but it will also transmit specific data out for people to be able to receive with a standard device such as a smartphone or a piece of hardware that is designed to pick these up. Now, right now, there has been no specific standard set for this remote ID, but everyone requires that it is going to be open. And the kind of data your aircraft will be transmitting is its location, its height, the pilot location, the takeoff point, the speed it's traveling at, and a number of other bits of data, including serial number and things like that, and your ID that you will get from them too. So your aircraft, whilst in the air, will be constantly transmitting this data, and it will be transmitting this out for everyone to see. The standard remote ID will also be required to connect to a network remote ID via the internet via a USS provider. Now, this is something entirely new. And what they're proposing is, as I said at the start, everyone will be required to have a subscription with a basically a UTM. Your aircraft software, not necessarily the aircraft itself, but your ground station will be required to connect to that over the internet before you can fly. And also transmit that data. So not only will it be transmitting your location, your speed, your height from the aircraft itself, your ground station will also be required to connect to the internet and transmit that data to the UTM provider as well. It must be compliant and FAA certified. So what that means is the aircraft must be made to comply with these and the FAA will have to certify models after two years to be able to work with this system. And the data transmitted on the systems, as I said, AUAS identification number, serial number or session ID. And what they're talking about there is how the aircraft will communicate with the UTM and, and what info they will give you. They'll give you like a MAC address is probably a simpler term to use, like you have on a computer, which will be unique to you. Latitude, longitude, barometric pressure of both the aircraft and the pilot. So let's just digest that a second. They will be not only transmitting that data from the aircraft itself, but you will be uploading that to a UTM for everyone to have access to anywhere in 
the country. And whilst the transmission from the aircraft is always going to be limited by signal range, say 40, 50, 60, uh, four, five, six kilometers, say, the aircraft one is limited, but the UTM one is going to be going into the cloud and accessible for everyone to see. Now, the standard remote ID is pretty much what most aircraft will end up complying with in the sense of most cots or consumer off the shelf drones. Now, model aircraft are slightly different and I'll come on to that separately. But the reality is whilst the network ID is quite a new thing, it isn't a massive technical challenge from the sense of all it will take is your ground station software on your phone to actually go online. Now there are questions to be had about what happens when you don't have phone signal and I'll talk about that specifically next. Now the second bit of remote ID is called limited ID and this is going to be for aircraft that are not able to transmit the remote ID information themselves but they will still be required to transmit via the network and in fact that proposal goes a step further if your aircraft cannot connect to the internet you will not be allowed to fly so level two or limited id is really an interesting one and it is going to be strange to see how this one unfolds because what they're saying is the aircraft itself doesn't actually have to transmit any data but the ground station does but if your ground station doesn't transmit you're not allowed to fly if you're offline you're not allowed to fly and I'll come on to that again in a minute. Now the data it's got to upload is very similar to the data that it required before. It's UAS identification, serial number, but what you will notice is it requires the latitude, longitude and barometric pressure of the control station and not the aircraft because your aircraft is not transmitting, therefore that data isn't required. But the main difference between limited and the standard ID is one, your aircraft is able to to transmit itself wirelessly to people in its local area and the limited one isn't and it has to transmit online. Now there is one massive downside to the limited remote ID and you will see that as the top one that I skipped over and that is that you will be limited to 400 foot distance in all directions from the ground station at all times. This must be a physical limitation and it must be in the software of the aircraft as well. And this is the reason why I say most drones, for instance, will comply with the standard ID once we get to that stage, because at the end of the day, the aircraft transmitting really isn't the difficult aspect. Now, you might wonder, well, why is this limited ID in place? Well, the reality is this is a bit of a get out of jail plan in the sense of aircraft that aren't able to transmit today might be able to have a ground bit of software that does transmit and you will able to use them in the future compared to aircraft that doesn't. For models that will be made to comply with these rules I would expect everything to be using the standard ID and not the limited one. So Moving over to the UTM, what is a USS provider? Well, they are an internet-based company who will provide tracking and logging data for flights of standard and limited ID aircraft. This will not be the FAA. They are going to farm this out to a number of third parties. So you will choose your provider, just like you chose your phone provider today or your broadband provider. Your drone or model aircraft will connect via Wi-Fi, cellular or any data connection. Now, as I mentioned, the most logical way this will work is your aircraft will connect to your remote controller with your screen and then your phone via your software will connect to the internet. The chances of aircraft connecting directly for general use is going to be fairly low and it is really going to be the software on your ground station or your app that does this aspect of the connection. It will be required to provide live flight data at one hertz, which is one update a second. So your data will be going online live, updated once a second to their servers. As I mentioned, they'll be provided by third parties, but this is going to cost you money because you are going to have to subscribe. And the FAA believe they believe the price to be around 0 to £5, and they're saying average of around $2.50 a month for each aircraft. Now, what happens when you have more than one aircraft at this moment? I don't know whether providers will do a package deal or not. It's hard to know at this stage, but there is going to be an additional cost to users by doing this. It will be mandatory for standard ID craft and they won't work without 
being registered with one of these USS providers. Now that means if you buy your drone, you will be forced to register with one of these providers before it will work. So much so, the FAA have actually wound in this section where you actually have to register your aircraft with them and then they give you a certificate that you have to give to the USS provider and there's a whole number of pages on this and it is a massively convoluted part of it and frankly it looks ridiculous however that is what they are proposing um, if your device is internet away it will be mandatory to connect however it will not be mandatory to be online and I will explain that a little bit more in a second so for a standard ID if your device is capable of going online you must go online and connect to the UTM or the USS for limited ID, you have to be online at all times or your aircraft will not work. And again, I'll talk about that in the next chart. Fine. Finally, sorry, the connection will be via phone or tablet, most likely. Again, the numbers of aircraft that are going to have uh, 3G on board is going to be fairly low. Really, this is going to be for most hobby users. Your aircraft connects to your ground station as it does today. And then your phone will simply connect via the app to the USS provider. Now, you might be wondering, well, what happens when this goes wrong? Because the reality is there isn't coverage everywhere, not everywhere you can connect. And will you be able to fly? Well, the answer to that is yes and no. Um, and it depends on what ID you have. So if your aircraft is capable of a standard remote ID, you must have it broadcast all of the time which is fine from the aircraft itself. Again, wirelessly generally will work probably in the air. It's going to go five, six kilometers in, whilst you're in the air. That data will be available. If you have an internet connection available, you must connect to the USS provider and then it will allow you to fly. If you have an internet connection available, but you don't connect to a USS provider, you will not be allowed to fly. But if you do don't have an internet connection available you will be allowed to fly i'll just explain that again because it doesn't make a lot of sense to me as well in the standard id the aircraft must transmit at all times locally on it via wireless that's fine people will pick that up for the i uss based the internet based if your device is a cellular device and it's online you will not be able to take off unless it has actually connected to the UTM USS provider. So if you choose not to choose one, it won't work. However, if you use a Wi-Fi device where there is no Wi-Fi, the software must be able to check this, go, oh, there's no connection. Don't worry, I will allow flight. So what they're saying is if you are able to connect, you should and it won't work until you do. But if you're not able to connect, it will let you fly anyway. Now, things are a little bit different for the limited remote identification system because there is no broadcast from the aircraft itself and it will only transmit from the ground station. So if you go to a location where there is no coverage, you will not be able to fly, period. If you take off and you lose internet coverage, what they say is you should land as soon as possible, but the flight will continue. But it will not let you take off until you have initially connected. Now, between the two, as I've already mentioned, I am not expecting the limited remote ID to affect many drones. Most aircraft that will be made, I will see going with the standard ID because really the only technical difference is one aircraft transmits which most of them are doing today anyway and the other one doesn't so for me the limited one is not so important for drones but it's very important for model aircraft and I'll come on to that in a second um, the chart also tells you what happens if you lose a uh, remote ID from the aircraft. So if there's a fault on the aircraft, you should land as soon as possible. There's also a whole host of background stuff on this as well, where they say um, the aircraft must not be allowed to take off if anyone tampers with the remote ID, if it detects a problem with it, if there's data missing. So you will be required to make sure this is all working and the software has a whole host of fail safes in place to prevent you taking off anyway. Um, 
So, non-compliant remote ID UAS, and this is where things get a lot more sketchy and really does affect the model aircraft community. As I've said, I expect drones to be able to fairly easily comply with this. Technically, this isn't particularly difficult to do. Drone ID is no different to Aeroscope as we have it today. Broadcast is just transmitting wirelessly over an open protocol, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. The internet based is really just software, but again, you will have to pay. So where do you stand with aircraft that don't have remote ID, were built beforehand or drones you have today? Well, it's required on all aircraft over 0.55 pounds for starters to operate outside FAA recognized identification areas. Now, this is the first time you've seen me mention this because this is an important part of the puzzle, which I haven't spoke about yet. As part of all of this, they are proposing FAA recognized identification areas be set up over the US. Easiest way to think of this is this would really be your model aircraft sites that you have today with the AMA. They will have to ask for permission to get it. There is a whole host of nonsense, frankly, around that as well of who can become one, when you can do it. And they're also closing the doors on it. But what they're saying is any aircraft that doesn't have remote ID that is over 0.55 pounds will only be able to fly in FAA recognized identification areas. So just to unpack this, that is any plane, any helicopter, any drone that does not have remote ID will only be allowed to fly in designated areas. Flying them anywhere else will be illegal. They are likely to be places like club sites and AMA fields. And as I said, there's a huge bit in that around it. And I'm not going to get into that in this video, but there's also a lot of hoo-ha around what they're going to allow with that, where and when and stuff from that. Even when you are flying at these places, you will only be able to fly limited to 400 foot as well, unless there is any special conditions on a specific site. You must always stay within the boundaries of the recognized area. Current models, so drones, planes and everything you have today will have two years to comply or be restricted to these recognized areas as well. And I'll come on to that a bit more in the end. I know I keep saying that. I apologize. Um, and self-build aircraft will be required to be compliant as per the weight. So if it's over 0.55 grams and depending on the build type, depending on who's responsible. However, that's not to say it's not required to comply. It's only who is responsible for ensuring it complies. And what I mean by that is if an aircraft is deemed made by a manufacturer, they are legally obliged to ensure it complies or it's not allowed to be sold in the USA. If it's classed as a self-build, the person who builds it will be legally required to ensure it complies uh, and use it within the USA. So self-build aircraft are included in this they are the only thing that's really in place is whether the company who manufactures the parts or the company or the person sorry who makes it is responsible for ensuring it complies and there is a bit around that what is classed as self-build and what isn't and the basics of this are if you buy a kit that has all parts in it it is classed as manufacturer if you have a kit that contains between 50 percent parts and more it's basically manufacture or if you make up to 50 percent of the parts it's going to be classed as self-build but again this doesn't change where you're restricted to this simply says who is responsible for ensuring it complies everyone will be restricted to these faa recognized areas so the basics of this whole bit here are aircraft that you own today will not be compliant once this comes into law whether it be a helicopter, a plane, a chopper, sorry, a helicopter, plane, um, anything, glider, anything that flies, if it bought today and doesn't comply from two years after coming into law, you will only be able to fly in FAA recognized sites, period. Your aircraft does not comply. You will be restricted to 400 foot specific areas to fly. If you then buy a new product that does comply with these regulations, then you will be able to fly normal locations as long as it has either a standard ID 
or a limited ID, depending on what the aircraft is. Now, the other thing to take into account is drones, this will really be fairly straightforward for them. However, model aircraft built after this point, this is really going to change things because most model aircraft don't have GPS on board. So they're not going to be able to comply with the standard ID anyway, and they will be forced into the limited ID. But the limited ID, you're going to be stuck with a 400 foot distance limit anyway and that must be fixed in software so even if planes and stuff are able to comply with this without gps and you have a ground unit which transmits what you're doing you will still be far more limited than you are today and the reality of this legislation is whilst the remote id of the broadcast aspect is fairly straightforward and simple the network requirements are basically forcing everyone into specific faa recognized areas any aircraft you have today you will be limited to FAA recognized areas any aircraft that does not comply that is over 0.55 pounds will be again limited to FAA recognized areas so the reality is this is forcing model RC back to AMA fields limited to 400 foot you're not allowed to go anywhere else unless it's going to get a transponder on board a network connection on your ground station and tell them where you are and pay your monthly subscription and that is the basics of this now there is one other bit i want to touch on about privacy because there was something i spotted on this which i found quite interesting um, and as i mentioned earlier on the system will prevent flight if tampered with or not registered with the uss so again even if you buy a drone it will not allow you to fly until it is fully registered with the USS provider and then broadcasting your ID data back. It must automatically connect to that provider when a connection is available. As I said earlier, there's this strange bit where if you have a device with a cellular connection, it will have to connect. However, if you have a Wi-Fi device, it won't and they'll let you fly under a standard ID. But again, a limited ID, it must be online at all times. Police and law enforcement will have the ability to connect to the USS ID network and see what people are doing and where. That basically means law enforcement, police and all agencies will have live access to the entire USA's GPS drones flying everywhere. They will see every drone that is connected to this network at all times everywhere in the USA. They will see where everyone is and what they are doing. Um, interesting thought, that one. It really, really is. And it is a UTM. It's as simple as that. Finally, and this is the interesting bit I wanted to mention, USS providers will be required to keep your flight records for no more or less than six months. So every flight that you connect to the internet network with via the USS provider, they will hold that data on you for six months months your entire flight history will be held for six months with uss providers so that is also something to be aware of and i do have some concerns around that with businesses for instance and who's going to have that data and the security of that data and are you going to get a knock on the door two months later because someone said you were flying there two months ago and something was stolen or someone was injured or a crime took place so it's going to be interesting to see how this pans out now i've ended this presentation here because i could have gone on another four hours and and i just want to apologize if i've sort of ranted through that bit i'm just gonna give you my thoughts on this now having digested this for a few days this is fairly draconian compared to the rest of the world if we look at the eu the eu is implemented sorry not proposed this is coming into law in july we're going to have to have remote id which is broadcast from aircraft but at the end of the day that's a technical milestone for the manufacturers to get over fairly straightforward whilst i don't like the idea of my aircraft giving out both the aircraft's location and the pilot's location at all times it is only within range of the aircraft it is not further out and it is not an online system you will be able to fly regardless the other thing about the EU regulations is for aircraft that don't comply, you lose nothing. So what the way, sorry, the way they've set the EU regs out is aircraft that comply get more benefits than they can have today. You can fly in congested areas. You can fly closer than you ever have before. Aircraft that won't comply 
basically have to fall under the same rules we have today. There is no more restriction. You are not limited to specific areas. You just can't fly in a congested area. You are not forced into specific uh, um, club sites or anything like that. So the EU has taken it. If your aircraft doesn't comply, really nothing changes for most hobby users. But if your aircraft does comply, you get all these new benefits and it makes compliance a benefit to people. And whilst the remote ID is still a bit, you know, uncomfortable, it's only transmitting from the aircraft up to the distance, probably five kilometers, maybe a bit more from the air. But the reality is it isn't a network ID like the US is proposing. The US has taken this really as a massive kick to everyone. Drone users, hobby RC users, anyone who flies a model aircraft are basically being kicked into specific FAA recognized areas unless your aircraft is compliant. Now, whereas in the EU you lose nothing but you get more, in the US you lose everything and you only get back what you had if you're compliant and it is a very very different way of doing it and again you've got the two parts of the remote id again the broadcast id with the aircraft is transmitting really that is identical to eu nothing is different on that but this internet based uss id having to be online at all times is taking it to another level and you're basically then going to have every government agency tracking every aircraft in the sky now some other differences between the us and the europe um self builds in the europe fall under the specific category which means you can fly outside of congested just like it is everyone else in the us they are bundling self build in with everyone and that includes fpv craft as well there is no distinction here for gliders unpowered model aircraft FPV quads, race quads, if it's over 0.55 pounds, you will be affected by these laws. Now, as I said at the start, this is just a proposal today. You have your opportunity to feed back on this. There's a link to that in the description of this video as well. My personal thoughts on this is I think it's frankly bonkers is no other term to use. The US seems to have taken this to an entirely new level with this network id and and what they're clearly doing is kicking everyone where they can see them and they're forcing you into pens unless you comply and even when you do comply they're going to know where you are anyway so the reality is in the u.s system they will know where you are at all times you are either flying and telling them you're flying or you're in a recognized area and what they're doing is forcing you into compliance one way or another whereas in europe you're going to have to tell people where you are but if you're not going to be able to do that you have to fly away from people out of the way and you're okay and don't worry you're just like you were before and that is the basics of it um i hope this video has been helpful i've ranted on long enough now i need to go and get a drink um i apologize if i seem to have sped through this i hope it's made sense i don't know how it'll come across i'll actually watch this one back myself i'll upload it and then watch it back again get involved get the feedback on this one it really is not good you need to get involved you need to tell them what you think Every model RC user is affected in this. They are going to try and force you into areas, take away the freedoms that you've got today. And in the end, you're going to be limited to either buying an aircraft that complies or you're flying at an AMA, uh, AMA field. And if they want you to fly there is another question or not, depending on what aircraft you've got. That is it for this video. I hope it's been helpful. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. There's a link in the bottom right hand corner, as I said at the start, and I will do another video again soon.